Hi guys, it's Wee Wee here. It's school holidays and today I'm making crocheted friendship bracelets with the help of a lovely assistant. Say hello, lovely assistant. Hello. It's such a fun activity. It's one that you might like to do with your kids or your grandkids and it's great for play dates. If you know how to crochet, this is going to be a breeze. What you'll get from this video is some tips on how to teach your kids to crochet and an idea for a really simple friendship bracelet. If you've never crocheted before, this video will teach you a couple of crochet techniques so that you'll be able to show your kids how to make the friendship bands. This is a very forgiving friendship bracelet, so as long as you're using a pretty color of yarn, you'll end up with something that is fun and very wearable. Let's talk about supplies. You're obviously going to need yarn and use whatever you have to hand, but if you can, go for a thicker yarn. Thicker yarn is just much easier for kids to handle and it's easier for beginners in general. Crochet hooks. If you can, avoid giving your kids a metal crochet hook. Particularly when you're using thicker yarn, those metal hooks can get quite heavy and it's a bit cumbersome for smaller hands. Give the kids a hook that is one size larger from what the yarn recommends. I'm going to be using this nine millimeter hook while my lovely assistant will be using a 10 millimeter hook. To find the hook that's recommended for your yarn, have a look at the paper label wrapped around the yarn. I'm using Motivira Monkey Yarn, and if you have a look at the yarn label, you'll see here that it says to use nine millimeter needles for knitting. For making these friendship bands, you can translate that to the same size hook for crocheting. Scissors. No further explanation needed. A needle. You might find you can get away without using a needle, that will depend on the yarn you use and I'll explain that when we get to it. Beads. These are optional, but they do make the bracelets more exciting. We're using alphabet beads. Use any bead you like as long as the yarn will fit through the hole. Let's get started. Step one is putting a slip knot on the hook. This end of the yarn, the cut end, is the tail. The side that's attached to the ball is called the working end. With your left hand, poke out the pointer finger and hold it sideways like this. Hold the tail in your right hand and take it from the front of your hand to the back, looping it over your pointer finger, and then bring it to the front. And that creates a little cross. Change the tail over to your left hand and hold it between the middle finger and the thumb of your left hand. With your empty right hand, pick up the working end of the yarn and bring it to the front, and then take it over the top of your pointer finger and then hold both pieces of yarn with the thumb and the middle finger of your left hand like this. I now have two lines of yarn on the top of my finger. Pick up the piece of yarn that's closer to your knuckle, the piece of yarn on the left. Lift it over the other piece of yarn and over the tip of your finger and then let it go. Take hold of the two pieces of yarn with your right hand. Give them a bit of a tug and that has tightened up the knot. Hold the ends with your left hand again and pick up the hook. Pop it into the loop of yarn in the gap under your finger and take your finger out. Now you have a slip knot on your hook and the loop that's on your hook at any time is called the working loop. To tighten up the working loop, pull on the working end of the yarn. You don't want it to be very tight. You want to be able to easily slide it backwards and forwards on the hook like this. The knot itself, that should be tight, but the loop on your hook is in between loose and tight. Step two, how to hold the yarn and the hook. Hold the hook in your dominant hand. Try holding it like a pencil, or like a butter knife. Either is fine. Kids might like to hold the hook closer to the hooked end, as hooks are usually sized for adult hands. It's holding the yarn that can be the difficult bit. When you're making these bracelets with kids, I suggest that you handle that difficulty by avoiding it. When I teach kids, I very rarely show them how to hold their yarn. I get the hook into one of their hands and the yarn into the other and I let them start the fun bit. My lovely assistant will demonstrate how she holds the hook and the yarn. She holds the hook in a knife hold some of the time, but she shifts her grip a lot. She doesn't so much hold the yarn as pick it up when she needs to wrap it. And she often uses both hands to move the hook and the yarn around. This is her second time crocheting and she got comfortable with the hook and yarn quickly. Look at that lovely long chain. 
For adults, you can do the same for a little project like this one, but if you're keen to keep crocheting, I suggest you have a go at holding the yarn by wrapping a finger or two and finishing with the yarn on top of your pointer finger. It will feel awkward and strange though, so feel free to shift the yarn around and try to find a way that suits you. Don't get too stuck on how you should be doing it. I'll show you how I hold my yarn now so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. I take the working end from where it's attached to the hook and I slip it between my ring finger and my pinky. I wrap my little finger, then I take it on top of the ring finger, under the middle finger, and on top of the pointer. And that creates a nice, straight, tense piece of yarn between my pointer and the yarn on the hook. And that tension will help me to make nice, even stitches. I use the middle finger and the thumb to hold onto the tail. As I crochet, I'll shift my grip, staying close to the hook as my strip of crochet gets bigger. Step three, chaining. A chain is the simplest crochet stitch and it's the only stitch you'll need to know to make the bracelet. Let's get straight into it now. Yarn over, which means bring the yarn from the back of the hook to the front. Then rotate the hook so its sharp bit is pointing down and use the hook to pull the yarn through the working loop. That's called chaining. Let's do it again. Yarn over, bring the yarn from the back of the hook to the front, turn your hook so its hook is downward, use the hook to pull the yarn through the loop. One more time, yarn over. You can move the hook and the yarn at the same time or just one of the two. Turn the hook downward slightly and use it to drag the yarn through the loop on your hook. Now I'll give you an idea of how kids might prefer to do this. Making these bracelets is a fun holiday activity for us, not a serious lesson, so I wanted the kids to spend their time making bracelets, not learning crochet technique. In my experience, if they're actually interested in learning more crochet, the way they hold their yarn and make their stitches will gradually change as they get more comfortable. I like to let them go at their own pace. In the earlier clip I showed you, you saw that my lovely assistant did something that looked a bit like this. Pick up the yarn and yarn over, bringing it from the back to the front. Then use your fingers to pick up the loop on the hook and lift it up over the other bit of yarn and over the hook. And then straighten up the crochet so it hangs down from the hook. Yarn over from the back to the front. Then pick up this bit, the working loop, and lift it over the other piece of yarn and over the hook. The only important bit is to keep shifting the chain so it hangs down from the hook. That way the stitches won't get too twisted. I guess the main difference is when I crochet, I use the hook to pull the yarn over down through the loop. This way you pick up the loop and lift it over the yarn over. It achieves the same purpose. A lot of kids seem to prefer a method that lets them use their fingers to rearrange the yarn, at least while they're first learning. And it's fine, this is still a chain. The beauty of these nice simple friendship bracelets is that in a pretty colour of yarn, they're going to look super cute regardless of how neat the stitches are and they can make them pretty quickly so there's lots of early success and lots of presents for friends when you can catch up or when school goes back. This isn't quite long enough yet so I'll do a couple more chains with you. First I'll demonstrate how to chain using the hook. Hold the yarn in your left hand in a way that you feel comfortable with. Yarn over from the back to the front rotate the hook down and pull the yarn through the loop. Using your fingers, yarn over from the back to the front, pick up the working loop and lift it over the yarn over and over the tip of the hook and then straighten the chain. Yarn over from the back to the front, lift up the working loop, ease it over the top of the hook. Yarn over, pick up the working loop, lift it up and over the yarn over and over the top of the hook and straighten your chain. Step four is to turn this chain into a bracelet. Check that it's long enough. Wrap it around the wrist to check it will fit over their hand but not be too loose on their wrist. I'm not gonna to manage to wrap it around my own wrist. It's not long enough and I'm not that coordinated. But after making loads of these earlier today, I know this would fit my nine-year-old. I've got to admit though, he's not actually keen on wearing one, but his friend, my lovely assistant, does like to wear them and it's been a really fun day. It's time to cut the yarn. Leave yourself a bit of extra yarn so you can tie it. It doesn't have to be an exact length, just your best guess. Now slide the hook out. Don't take the hook out. 
pull on this loop in order to pull the tail all the way through. Now you can create a knot. The last chain will tighten up and become a knot. Just pull on the tail and on the chain and the last of those chains will become a nice little knot. You can pull on the knot from the beginning of the chain too to check it's still tight. Now you can thread on a bead. If you're lucky, you'll have a needle that will fit your yarn and go through your bead. I found I could get the beads on easily by folding the yarn and twisting it, making it a bit thinner. And with just a little peeking out between my finger and thumb, I can gently twist the bead onto the yarn. Once the bead is on, all we did was tie the ends together. Try to keep the knots quite close to the bead if you can, though often our knots have been a bit further apart and the bracelets still look really cute, so don't worry too much if they're further apart. As we made more and more of these using this particular yarn, I found that tying three knots worked best. I also made sure to pull hard on the knots. The kids tie them and I make sure they're properly tight. I'm fairly confident that they're gonna stay in one piece. However, some yarn is really slippery. You might tie the knot, pull on it to check it and find that it slips. If that happens, you'll need to do what's called weaving in the tails. It means you'll need to sew in each of the cut ends. You do that one end at a time. Thread it onto your needle. My trick for threading the thick yarn is to fold it over the needle to create a sharp fold and then hold it tight between my thumb and forefinger and thread. It works well for me, so it's worth a go if your yarn is being uncooperative. When the yarn is on your needle, if you're lucky, you can take it through the bead away from where you've tied the knot. Or if you're like me, you can only go in this direction away from the bead. And I take it through a few chains and then back again, making sure I've gone around another bit of yarn so it doesn't just pull straight out. And usually three times is the recommended number of times to over sew, but I'm quitting it too because this yarn is not slippery and it's going to be fine. But if you need to sew in the ends, you will need to do both of the tails, not just one. And then you can snip them off really close and you'll have a cute little friendship bracelet. An extra big thank you to my lovely assistant and to my favorite peanut gallery for their help with this video. What a fun afternoon. Remember to click the like button and subscribe for more crochet fun. Let me know in the comments if you want more kid-friendly videos. And let me know who you're making these friendship bracelets with. Because once you get the hang of it, it's just like wrap, up, over, wrap, over, wrap, over, and then you just lose your whole time and you just got the scarf with yarn. Look, my Oh, team. that's lovely. Snack break! My two favourite things, crocheting and Lego. <laughs>